What is good guys, I hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, I am going to give you a full step-by-step -step guide on how to build yourself an awesome AMD-based gaming PC. So obviously, just before we begin, you do not have to use all the parts that I am using in this build. For example, I am using a Ryzen 5 3600X and pairing it with the MSI X570 Meg. So this motherboard is indeed more expensive than the chip so it may not make a lot of sense for people. You may want to pair that with a Ryzen 7 processor or go for a cheaper MSI motherboard. But with that said, let's look at the rest of the parts. So the other parts that I will be using in this guide include the Zotac 2070 Super Amp Extreme Graphics Card, the XPG Levante 240 CPU Cooler, the Spectrix S40G 512GB RGB NVMe, 16 gigabytes of Spectrix D60G 3200 MHz RAM and the case that I am using is the XPG Battle Cruiser in white and that comes in super handy as it has four RGB fans already installed for us and the power supply that I'm going to use is the Cooler Master V750. Okay, so now that we have covered all the parts, let's just go ahead and get into this. So the first step is to prepare the motherboard. So let's go ahead and install our CPU. When handling the CPU, do take note that on the rear we have these pins. Do not bend or damage these at all as you will ruin the processor. You will also see that we have this gold dot in the corner and to install all we have to do is match this up with the marking on the motherboard. When you have figured that out, open the slot by releasing the latch and gently set the CPU in place. No force is needed at all then simply close the latch over again. Next up, we will go ahead and install our RAM. Take note that the RAM sticks have this cutout and this will line up with the notch in the dim slots that you see here. In order to know the best slots for the RAM, always refer to your motherboard manual as it is all written down for you. If you aren't using this motherboard, you may only have a latch on one side, but this board has two, so go ahead and open them up by pushing down. And from there, you can go ahead, line the RAM up Put it in the slot and push down and it will lock into place. So now we go ahead and move on to our NVMe drive. As this is an RGB NVMe, I will be installing it in the bottom slot just so that we can see it. If you don't have an RGB NVMe drive or M.2 drive, then feel free to use any slot that you wish. So to go ahead and install it, all you have to do is remove the cover from the motherboard. It is one screw. And just take note that on the back of the cover, we do have this thermal pad that does have a plastic cover. And if you aren't using an RGB M.2, then you will definitely want to use this. And all you have to do is simply peel the plastic away and reinstall the shield. So to install the NVMe, take note again of the cutout on the drive and line it up with the notch in the motherboard. It just simply pushes into place. And from there, you can use the included screw and secure the drive into place. I would just like to reiterate that if you are not using an RGB drive then it's definitely worth using these covers as it will keep the heat down on the NVMe itself so definitely go ahead and reinstall it. Okay so now it's time to get this motherboard in the case. Inside the case itself you will find a box with everything you will need for this. As our motherboard has a built in IO shield we don't have to install it but if you have one included in the box then you can just install it like so. It's a bit fiddly and it will require some pressure, so just go ahead and press that in. If you're using the same board as me, then you won't have to worry. Next up, just lower your motherboard into the case and it should line up with the standoffs. You will feel it sit nicely in position. From there, take the motherboard screws. Again, this will be labelled in your case booklet and we will go ahead and screw the motherboard into position. When doing this, I advise using a crisscross method. So start at one corner, then move diagonal, etc. until it is all secure. Now we are going to go ahead and install our power supply. The first job is to take the included bracket and secure it to the power supply using the four screws provided. From there, slide it in from the back, wires first and fan facing to the bottom into position. You can then use the four screws to secure it to the case. So to make things easier, we are going to go ahead and install some of the wires now from the power supply. So go ahead and grab the eight pin CPU cable, or in our case on this power supply, it's two four pins, and plug it into your CPU power slot located here. Next, we will power the motherboard using this 24 pin cable. Mine has an extension on it purely for looks, and it plugs into the slot located here, 
Just make sure you give it a good firm press to ensure it is seated correctly. So now that we have that out of the way, we are going to go ahead and install our CPU cooler. The first job is to remove the brackets already attached to the motherboard. They have two screws each, so go ahead and remove them. When you have done that, the back plate stays in place and all you have to do from here is attach the AMD standoffs which are labelled and included in the box, just hand tighten them into place. Now that we have done this, we can set the cooler up. We have to install the fans, I will be installing this on the top of the case, so if you are doing the same, follow along, and if not, and you are installing it on the front, then you will want to mount the fans on the other side, obviously, so that you are getting airflow in the right direction. If you are doing it the exact same as me, then you will have no worries. So the fans screw into place using the long screws in the box, and I will give you a pro tip right now, always look which way the wires will be going when you are installing this because if you install the fans with the wires facing out then cable management is going to be a nightmare so always just double check before you screw the fans down because i have even put them the wrong way around and had to change everything and it's just a bit of a nuisance so moving on from there you will notice that the cooler has pre-installed thermal paste personally i like to go ahead and use my own it likely makes no difference at all but it's just something that i always do if you want to keep that thermal paste, I'm sure it will make little to no difference at all. If you want to go ahead and clean it yourself, then you can do it using some Tim Clean. Now you will want to install the AMD bracket. It just twists into place. Just make sure that you put it in the correct position, allowing the XPG text to be straight. So the last job before installing this is to connect up all of our cables. So the fans and RGB cables just go in a loop, as you can see. Then you just basically use the included fan extension cable in the box to complete the loop. I have put together a separate install video of this so if you're really stuck you can refer to that. It will be launching probably a few days after this video but the manual is very clear and concise anyway so just follow that along and you will have no issues. Now we can go ahead and connect this 3 pin cable that comes off the pump head to the CPU header on the motherboard and the extension cable from the fans just simply plugs into the fan header right beside it. If you're using a different motherboard, positions may vary, but the labels are the exact same. So to install this in the case, we need to remove the top, and this is done by removing the two thumb screws on the rear and sliding it towards the back. Next, we will apply thermal paste to the CPU, or if you're using the pre-applied stuff, just totally forget that. Then we can take the pump head and position it over the standoffs and secure it down using the included thumb screws. Again, use a crisscross pattern. When it's secured, give it a little extra tightening with a screwdriver, but not too much. And from there, position the radiator at the top and secure it using the small screws and washers included. You can then tidy your cables and reapply the top of the case in reverse order. So if you plan on installing extra drives, I suggest going ahead and do this now. SEDs can be slid into the caddies like so, then you simply give them some power using the SATA power cables from the power supply, and then connect them to the motherboard using your SATA cables that either came with your motherboard or you have bought separately. One end basically goes to the SSD, and the other goes to a SATA port on the motherboard. If you're going to use mechanical drives, then the process is the exact same. So now it's time to go ahead and connect all of the case cables up to the motherboard. Let's start with the front I.O. Again, this is all labelled in the motherboard book, so just attach them as labelled and you are good to go. Next we have our two USB 3 cables. These attach to the USB 3 ports on the motherboard. Just take note of the notch on the cable when lining it up and simply press it into place. Now for the audio cable. It attaches on the bottom of the motherboard, far left side as seen here. It is just simply pushed into place. So the last cable from the case is a SATA cable and it just needs power from the power supply. So just go ahead and connect it up. So now that all the wiring is done, we can install our graphics card. Remove these two screws here and this will allow you to remove the brackets. Then make sure the PCIe slot is open by pushing down on the latch. And from there, you can line the graphics card up and push it into place. It shouldn't take a lot of force, so just make sure it's lined up good and proper and then simply reattach the two screws to keep the card secure. Then go ahead and grab the PCIe cables from your power supply. On this power supply, we have a 6 plus 2 layout, so for the 8 pin, join them together and for the 6, just fold the other two out of the way and plug them in like so. So that's pretty much the job done. 
All we need to do now is ensure that the fans from our cooler are connected to the fans from our case and by that I mean the RGB part of them. So simply connect the RGB connectors up in a loop. It explains it all in the manual anyway, it's super simple. All you have to do is connect two wires and you're pretty much good to go. Now you just go ahead and plug the PC in, connect it to your monitor and fire it up. Hopefully it lights up and it boots into the BIOS like so. If it doesn't, then don't panic, just go ahead and recheck all of your connections. There might be a loose wire or something you missed, so don't totally panic. And obviously if you are fully stuck, you can go ahead and join the Discord group. There are plenty of people in there that will be willing to help. A link for that will be down below. And of course, you can leave a comment or question down below and I will definitely get back to you. From there, it's just a case of installing Windows and the drivers for your motherboard and graphics card etc. I will leave an awesome video for that linked down below that you can follow along. It's really not hard to do. All the drivers for your motherboard are included on a disc if you wish to use that of course and you can get the rest online very very easy. Okay so that pretty much wraps this build guide up. Hopefully you have put together a pretty awesome AMD gaming PC and if you have definitely take a picture and show me by tagging me on Twitter. I really love to see what you guys have come up with or join the Discord and show off your setup, etc. So as always guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.